Hello and welcome to another video tutorial brought to you by Octotuts.com. Today we're going to be learning how to install a very simple block script onto any website. So first of all, you're going to need a website to begin with. Uh, the website that I'm using or the website that I'm going to use to install this block script is my clothing line website, AverageKings.com. Uh, so I decided that I wanted a blog on the site. Now, originally I had this blog uh, linked to Tumblr, but I wanted an actual blog within the website so I could post updates and stuff and people stay on the website to see the updates. So in order to do that, I did a quick Google search and I found this really cool free PHP script. It's called Miniblog. And uh, Miniblog allows you to install this blog, as I said, onto your website. Uh, and actually, this is how it looks originally. It's a very, very simple blog, uh, not much uh, design aspect to it, but what we could do with Miniblog is take just this blog part of it and put it on our own website. So let's get started. Uh, the link to download Miniblog will be in the video description below, and once you open up that link, you just want to click on this download link right here. And I'm going to minimize this, and I already have Miniblog downloaded, obviously I already have it installed, uh, so I'm going to open it up. And uh, we're going to take a look at what's inside. We have an ADM folder, which is pretty much all of your administration stuff. So you're not going to really mess with this folder. Uh, this is for later on after the script is installed. When you sign into your administration panel, uh, this is the folder that's taking care of all that stuff. Next, we have this includes folder. You're really not going to mess with too much of this either. It's just the configurations right here, different functions. Uh, the template file is right here. Uh, and then more importantly, you have the index.php folder and the install.php folder. So let's actually go ahead and open up the index.php folder using Dreamweaver. And I'm just going to press open. So again, we're using Adobe Dreamweaver to edit uh, the different codes inside of our website. There are several other programs that you could use, but I just prefer Adobe Dreamweaver. Now with index.php open, we see a couple things. The index file basically just has simple CSS script uh, that stylizes that simple look that we saw um, earlier on in the demo. And then it just has a couple different PHP codes that we need to take out of this and put onto our website file. So with that being said, I'm going to open up my website file. So I have averagekings.com open right here. We have blog.html. We'll change that to PHP shortly, but for now it's HTML. Um, and what I'm going to do is scroll down in the code right here and right in the container div, we're going to open up a new div. So div ID, I'm going to set that as blog and then we're going to close that up and we'll leave ourselves a little note and blog. Uh, if I'm moving a little too fast in this tutorial for you guys, um, the reason being is because I have previous tutorials that have taught you guys how to make your own website, uh, how to read all these different types of code. So if you do need a little bit of catching up, uh, installing a blog might be a little bit too uh, complex for you. Go ahead and check out my other tutorials so you could uh, learn all that stuff and then come catch up at this tutorial. So now what we're going to do is head over to that index.php file from the mini blog folder and we're going to copy this little snippet of code. Um, it's on line 90. It pretty much just says mini blog underscore posts. We're going to copy that and paste that where we want our posts to show up. All right. And then what I'm going to do is press enter a couple times after the blog. And I'm going to copy this entire div uh, of the navigation. So we're going to do that in there all the way until the close div right here. So from lines 92 to 101, we're going to copy and press paste. So uh, pretty much what we just did is we pasted in the posts. So all the posts are going to show up right where that little snippet of code is uh, pasted in. And then we also pasted in some navigation. So the previous and next links are going to show up wherever that code is pasted in. And then one last thing we need to do is we're going to scroll all the way up on index.php and just copy lines 1 through 5 and paste that all the way up. Uh, in our uh, blog page. So it's going to be lines one through five for us as well. And what that does is pretty much it calls the mini blog.php uh, script into action. So everything pretty much gets tied together and everything knows how to work together. And once that's done, we're going to click file save as and we're going to save it as blog.php. 
and press save. All right, and we're done for that. Now what we're gonna do is go ahead and open that folder. I'm just gonna delete uh, the blog.html file so that doesn't get confusing. And we're gonna take a look at a couple things. Up to this point, I have not copied and pasted any of the files from the mini block folder. So we're gonna go ahead and do that now. We pretty much just wanna copy and paste these four folders. There's the readme and the license also. Uh, but there's really no point to that since you're watching this tutorial. So we're going to copy four items and paste items. Okay, now we have the folders and the files that actually uh, that we actually need to make everything work together. And also with that being said, I noticed that I pasted the index file. We don't need this anymore. I'm going to delete that because we copied and pasted all the important parts of code into our blog.php file. Now one last thing we need to do to make this all work is go ahead and open up the includes folder and we're going to open up the config.php folder in Dreamweaver or the, the file in Dreamweaver. And this is just going to ask you for a database username, a database password, a database host, and a database name. Now uh, with that being said, you do need a host for this. So if you have your website hosted up on a paid host, I'm using bluehost.com for this, uh, then you shouldn't have a problem. There are some requirements to running this mini blog, so if we scroll down, we could check those out. You do need MySQL 4.1 or better to be running on your host, and uh, you do need PHP 4.3.0 or better, PHP 5 recommended. So if you do have a paid host, more likely than not, they already have this ready for you. If you do not have a paid website host that's hosting a website right now, I'll link you to a free website. It's called 000webhost.com in the video description below. You guys should check that out and sign yourself up so you can link your website so you'll have these things to use for this blog. So what I'm going to do is open up a new tab and sign into my Bluehost account. I'm already signed in, so what I'm going to do is scroll down. And we're going to take a look at my SQL databases. We're going to click on that. And I pretty much just want to make a new database and a username. So what we're going to do is new database. So uh, for as a default, mine set as octogeek underscore. Uh, let's do blog. And I'm going to create that database. Give it a second here. Okay. So the database is made. I'm going to go back now. And what I'm going to do is scroll down. Now I need a username for that database. So if I scroll down, it says add a new user. So we'll just say blog user. Okay, or just user. And then we'll add a password of whatever we want. Password again. And then we're going to create the user. That's step two and give that a second to load up here and then we're gonna go back and we're gonna scroll down and it says add user to database so now we need to find the user so octogeek underscore user and we're gonna add it to the database of octogeek underscore blog and we're gonna click add alright and then it's gonna say manage user privileges I'm gonna go ahead and give all the privileges to this user and make the changes and now we're done uh, with we're done opening the database and we're done adding a user to the database. Now we could go back to Dreamweaver and add in the username. So that's going to be octogeek underscore user. The password put uh, user blog and then uh, or was it, it was blog user. The host more likely than not is going to be localhost and the database name octogeek dot octogeek underscore blog all right we're gonna press file save and now we want to head over to our actual file manager uh, or I'm gonna go ahead and use an FTP client filezilla uh, I'll also link you guys to download this program as an FTP client in the video description below and what I'm gonna do is upload it to this folder called test so first I need to delete all these files because I showed you guys the uh, the sample of it in the beginning of this tutorial. So we're going to right click, click delete, and then we're going to upload those files and see what we come up with. Okay, so I deleted all the old files and uploaded all the new ones. Now all we need to do is install the script and we're done. 
So I'm going to open up my web browser. And now the link to this is octodesigner.com slash test. And uh, the file we want to run is octodesigner.com slash test or whatever URL you have. And you want to do slash install.php. Okay. So we're going to press enter. And it's going to say installing. Testing connection, success. Testing database, success. And that's what you want to aim for. We're going to press continue. And it's going to go to step two, creating table, success, inserting record data, success, continue. And installation is now complete. Now it's going to say view your mini blog here. Uh, this isn't going to work for me because it's taking me to an index.php, uh, but that doesn't exist for me. Um, and log into your mini blog admin panel with password, password here. So we want to click this admin. And you want to make sure to save this link because this is where you're going to sign into uh, to put new posts and to change your password and stuff like that. So obviously the first thing you want to do is change your password because the password is password. And uh, if we actually go to the blog page now, you'll see it says, Welcome to Miniblog, September 8th, 2012. And it has a little uh, introduction. And if we check our admin section, it says it right here. Here is our post name, Welcome to Miniblog. Posted on September 8th, 2012, and the status is published. Now we could either check it out and edit it, or we could go back to our posts and delete it, which is what I would recommend. We're going to press OK. And we could make a new post. So post title, uh, welcome to averagekings.com. Check out Average Kings. Check out the average kings blog and there you go that's our post title and our post content uh, we want to have our post status as published obviously uh, now one thing that I did notice because it is a very simple blog script um, let's let me just show you so I'm gonna click add I'm gonna go back to posts and it's here now we're gonna add a new post gibberish gibberish publish add okay so one thing that I did notice is let me refresh the page these two uh, posts that I put are stuck together. Uh, there's no space in between. As I said, it is a very simple block script. Now you could do one of two things. You could actually, if you have knowledge of coding and you have knowledge of uh, PHP and different things like that, you can mess with the mini block folder and all the files and edit it to your liking, uh, change the style of it uh, and stuff like that. So you can add gaps and different things like that. Or to simplify it, what we could do is at every at the end of every post, what I learned to do is pretty much just add some HTML and we're going to do uh, open bracket, BR, close bracket, and we're going to add two of those. That pretty much just adds two spaces. And uh, actually what I'm going to do is go back to posts and I want to edit it. So BR, BR, edit. And if we go back and refresh the page, now you see there's a little gap. So that's a little uh, substitution that I did to fix that little problem for you guys, just in case any of you were going to ask in the comments below. Now that's pretty much it. We have our own simple block script running on our own website, so we don't have to worry about uh, going to Tumblr or WordPress or anything like that. We have our own admin panel running, and everything's going good. So I hope you guys learned something today. I hope it worked out for you. If you have any problems, just comment below or message message my YouTube channel, uh, and I'll do my best to help you guys out. Subscribe for more tutorials in the future, and until next time, I will see you guys later.